up? This is Unit for True Game Heads, and I'm here with Shane from Ignition Entertainment. He's going to tell us a little bit about nostalgia for the Nintendo DS. So Nostalgia is the original RPG for the DS. There's a lot of role-playing games on the system, but most of them are just like ports and remakes of older games. This one is from the ground up, made for DS, and it was a collaboration between three companies. First of all, Tecmo, you know, the guys who made Ninja Gaiden, Fatal Frame, that they're produ the producers on it, and the planning and story were done by a company called Red. They've done a lot of uh, hardcore Japanese games like Far East of Eden, Sakura, Tyson, Gungrave. And then the final piece of the puzzle is Matrix Software. They're the developers who did Final Fantasy 3 and 4 on DS. So, you know, if you see this, it looks like totally 3D, looks really good for DS. It's kind of hard to get 3D to work on DS. So, you know, it's, it's an old fashioned, traditional role playing game. You fight monsters, you're flying in airships, you're finding hidden treasures. But at the same time, you know, there's kind of a, mo a new modern twist on it, too. Um, and yeah, I think it's one of the most exciting games coming out this fall for the DS. Uh, can you tell us some of the uh, touchscreen features that are incorporated in the game? You know, it, it doesn't go too crazy with touchscreen. You can use touchscreen in battles, and you can use touchscreen in some of the menus. But it isn't like gimmicky, you're not drawing stuff. It doesn't just use DS features just to use them. It's more really about the gameplay systems that are going on. And you know, if you're a role-playing guy, you get in this game. It starts out pretty simply, but a few hours in, you unlock um, like a, a really complex like, skill system. And there's two different battle systems, one for like the regular people and one for when you're in your airship. And you can completely customize the airship, put different weapons on it, change how it looks. And there's a, because you're this sky pirate, you can take on extra jobs. There's like hundreds of optional uh, quests you can take on, optional dungeons, optional bosses. So yeah, if you play the game kind of like Final Fantasy or Skies of Arcadia, it's, just, it's a lot like those games. Do you know what was the decision for them to go with the DS? Because you know, like the PSP is more powerful than well, actually, the idea for this game was first um, hashed about 10 years ago. The guy, Mr. Morita from Red, he had the idea for this game, he wanted to make it, and he was trying to go, well, what consoles should I make it on? And like, back then, he wanted to make it 3D, and 3D on handhelds wasn't ready. Because he wanted it to be a portable game, but it, it couldn't happen. So he had to wait for DS. And then when DS came out, you know, he was weighing DS versus PSP. And because the game is you know, skewed a little bit younger, but at the same time, because it plays like a game that we grew up playing, like an old Final Fantasy, it's, the idea was it's a game that maybe a parent or a kid could play, and maybe they could play it together, they could pass the DS between the two, you know, have multiple save slots on it. So DS just seemed like the best melding for the audience they're going for, plus the technology that they were looking to incorporate into the game. Since you guys have brought this one out, is there other games that are like still out in the Japanese market? that should be out over Dude, here. That's, that, that's my job. So when I came on board at Ignition, my job is to find, find games for us. And like, everyone at Ignition loves Japanese games. I mean, like, we grew up on these things, and we want to play them, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. You know, especially on DS in Japan, tons and tons of games. So, yeah, I'm currently evaluating anything. If there's any games you want me to look at, dude, just tell me, because oh, I'll yeah. take a look at yeah, it. You, we'll be doing that, you hear yeah. that? And because, you know, traditionally, a lot of the good stuff gets left in Japan, never gets to come out in America. And I'd like to change that. I'd like some of those games that are, you know, you might consider a little too weird, a little too strange. Hey, I think there's an audience for it. And hopefully we'll be seeing more stuff come in that you didn't expect. How has it been, like, if we know you come from more of a media background, like working here on the game, yeah. how, how are we able to transition into that? You know, it was a big, it's a big change. And, you know, I spent 10 years on the editorial side. And well, they, they always call this side the dark side when you go over to the publisher developer side and instantly my whole perspective changed because like, when you're in the press you get to play everything see everything but you never get too deep into any one game you're not that invested in it you know you enjoy something new coming but now when i get to see all the effort that goes into a game and from the ground up how much work goes into just like getting a concept created getting the people the right people together to bring it to market to get people to notice it uh, it's giving me a huge new respect for game design game development game publishers and you know, I'm excited because I feel like here I can hopefully really make a difference and, and bring the kind of games people want out, and you know, you know like help help make people happy. Whereas as a public, as a as a press, yeah, yeah you, you can write a review. Maybe I can keep you playing a bad game. I can point you towards a good game. Yeah. But ultimately, I can't affect how games get made when I'm, when I'm a journalist. Whereas now, hopefully, I'll be able to actually make games better and make people happy, dude. And then that's that's everything. Yeah.